You already know what it is, y'all. It's your boy, Big Ray. Hashtag Big Ray in the building. And uh, it's an honor. You know what I'm saying? This is, uh, we was walking in. I was giving a reminder how we how I met you. I know you don't remember. You know what I'm saying? But it's okay. It's the coolest of the cool. They call him Modi. Cool Modi in the building. Yes, 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 yes. What's up, man? Cooling. Too early for me. It is. I know. <laughs> what are you, a nocturnal? You said you were nocturnal? Over the top, yes. I go to sleep at 6 in the morning. Still? Just about yes, for the most part. Why? I'm creative. Stay up writing all the time. So we're still writing at this point in the game. Absolutely. All right, so let's get into it. You know, um, first of all, I need cats to understand that you are, or in my opinion, one of the original battle rappers, one of the original freestyles, one of the the, the catalysts of everything that's going on from the from the smacks and to everybody who who freestyles and battle raps. You are the originator. Has any of these other freestylers, you know, actually taken time to really sit down with the OG and, you know, try to get the formula or try to get the history or really talk about, you know, the origin of this battle rap thing? With me? Not yes. No, no, no. Why do you think? Because I'm not on social media at all and I'm really anti everything that's happening what they're calling progress mm -hmm. is robotizing us and we're becoming more robotic every day and people don't realize it. They're taking away our freedoms and a whole lot of things. It's like privacy is a thing of the past. Like right. really, like I'm at a dinner, I got a nice plate that I don't want to take a picture of it and put it on. I can't understand that. So I think this generation is like disconnected on one level to the history, quite frankly. And that's uh, that's kind of social media's fault, you're saying? Not social media's fault. I think social media is uh, part of the result of that, quite frankly. I think the way the way they happen because it, it wouldn't work if people were more secure in themselves mm -hmm. and didn't want to have the attention they had. But I, I understand that we're in a space where everybody wants to be heard. So right now, it's like if you go to a concert, everybody's at phone like this, and they send it to the friends that they have that aren't the concert or whatever, and they're talking about it and their their opinions heard now. So in the place we're in the place where everybody has an opinion can be heard. Mm. So so with fifty years of hip hop that's <clears> done. Came and gone, you know. We're now fifty-one years, but with fifty years of uh, hip hop, did you feel that anything was missing, or any certain people was missing out this whole, you know, celebration of the culture? I think most of the pioneers were missing. I think, quite frankly, we did a big thing at Yankee Stadium on the fiftieth anniversary, uh, and Nas was there. It was great because it was always great to see Nas. Quite frankly, mm -hmm. but um, I forgot the name of the company that he works with or whatever. Um, but they did it in Sugar Hill Gang, Grandmaster Flash, Furious Five. We all got on in the daytime. And then the show, as it progressed, then Snoop got on. Then uh, Queen, uh, not, 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 not that he, um, uh, Little Kim or whatever. Right. And, and Little Wayne came on later. So they got on at prime time, I said. And I think the way the business works is they are always trying to get as much money as they can and as much ex exposure as they can. And so they really, really played the roots of it. And I think that's one of our things in America that's really terrible. We're not really savvy about our roots anymore at all. Explain that. I think that knowing where something comes from is not a priority for us. It's almost like when, when I looked at the pandemic, it's like, it's, are people forgetting how it started? I'm like, it's not just that it's here. Yeah, you have to react to it. But go back to the beginning and think about where it came from. Mm -hmm. Even to the last thing I said in the last interview, I said, I've never, never even gotten over slavery, quite frankly. I said, and people don't really pay attention to break slavery down. It was a master, a slave master, and an overseer. That's two dimensions of slavery. So the oppressor is oppressing us, but the colonizer is really, really colonized us. That's the main, the main part that people don't pay attention to. So uh, I want to go back. In the, in the days of the early Kumo D, you know, and, and I'll go back to a show called Graffiti Rock, mm -hmm. you know, which, was, which I still think should have more episodes, but that's a whole different story. Um, when you was rhyming and doing what you did and trying to stay conscious at that time, were people able to gravitate towards that? Or was it in a state like they are right now, just trying to do their own thing? It was turning into that, quite frankly, because I come from the era and people, that's why I have the Malcolm X shirt on, mm -hmm. quite frankly. I came from an era where the streets had a whole level of consciousness um, that's revolutionary and really about pushing back to the system. And Malcolm X and Martin Luther King and all those people at the 60s came from that space. Right. In the 70s, you also had the, um, the pimp and the hustle on the upside of the street. 
but it got to the point where we're only showing one side of the street. So, and that transition was happening during hip hop. You know, I came from, I used to run with X-Clan back in the days, uh, Lumumba and, 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 and Brother X and all the mothers. And, uh, and there was a, a consciousness in rap, you know, X-Clan, PRT, yeah. even with the Jungle Brothers and, and Tribe. Absolutely. Why do you think we have gotten away from that so crazy right now where there's no, uh, no yeah. mention of any type of awareness within ourselves? Because I hate to figure to speak, but the colonizer is invested in us forgetting about ourselves. Explain. They don't want us to remember anything about how we got here. I keep telling people, we we here, we had to make a home here, but everybody, let's not forget how we got here. We were kidnapped. Mm. So the first line of my next song is saying, the, the middle passage is, is, is never happened. There's no such thing as the middle passage. That's the African Holocaust, and people don't want to look at that way. Because you put it in that context, it has to change everything you think about America when you look at it through that mm. context. And when you get to that kind of filtering, as MCs, you know we're going to talk about it the way we talk about it. It'll put a different thing in the consciousness, and it'll start some kind of real friction for, the, for America. Wow. So um, in this new age of rap and hip-hop, you know, with artists like the Kendrick Lamars and the 21 Savages, uh, is there, do you think there was any real respect for the 50 years of hip-hop, you know what I'm saying, and the pioneers and things like that? Like, ha have any of these artists really tried to dig deep within that to bring out something that they have now, you know, uh, that's relevant? I can't speak on anybody in particular, but I think in general, collectively, not individual, because my personal favorite is J. Cole, quite frankly. Mm -hmm. J. Cole's but dope. when you break it down, they're more focused on making money. And I think that's one of the things that the, because I said you got to break slavery down by the master and the overseer. The master is one thing, and that's the colonizer, and the overseer is the oppressor. Mm -hmm. So we have the colonizer and the oppressor, but it's really all about, all about colonizing us. So in colonizing you, they, they don't want you to think about backwards or think forwards. Even even the very European things that don't look back. And I say when you look at the Sankofa stick, it's like always look back. Mm -hmm. That's the African thing. Right. Always look back while we're going forward, quite frankly. But because we adopt to the European mindset, I keep telling people, do not forget we are kidnapped. It is not a middle passage. We were kidnapped and trafficked. That's the first line of my, my, my song. Mm. So if you break it down that way and look at it from that point and start from there and then build it up, you can see how all the things are how all the institutionalized racism is going on to this day. Institutionalized racism. They don't understand. That's a phrase that not a lot of people understand right now. Yes. So, uh, so you told me, you know, you're up creating and you got the new, what's the new project consist of? To it's called the African King. Speaking of what you're talking about with Xan, I'm using a sample from Brother Jay. He's, I'm using his voice. Ah. Um, yes. Um, um, the African King definitely, Africa, very African, Come and step into the brother, see yeah. what's happening. You see the African. cross flow coming from a zero. Tell me what a sissy know. Yes. Funk and lesson is sorry. Absolutely. Sorry. <laughs> Brother Jay's the hook of my the hook of my song. African. Very happy. That's my hook. That's dope. The African King. That's so dope, yo. And when is everything coming out? That'll be next year, uh, right at the top of next year, end of this year, top of next year, for sure. Dope, dope. Once again, Kumo D in the building with Big Ray. You already know what it is, yo. Hit me up on that gram at the Big Ray Show. All right, or Magic ATL. It's Magic 107.5, 97.5, the real sound of Atlanta. Yes, 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 yes. Cool, cool, cool.